And today we're out on my dirty old front porch because guess what I have? Got the Dremel. Let's cut into this flip. Now just a, a slight word of precaution. I, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. This is probably extremely dangerous and I would not try this at home if I were you. But because I'm me, I'm trying it at home. Uh, yeah, don't, don't. I think there's a snake next to me. You guys hear that? I'm gonna start off with this first cut right here. I have the sensor covered up with a piece of paper. That is my most critical cut because on the other side of that cut are those three, where is it? Those three capacitors right there. Hopefully I miss them and I go right down that line, that open space between everything right there. But that's why I'm doing it first. If this first cut doesn't work, we're out of luck unless somebody wants to send me another broken one that I can then turn this one into a Franken something or other like cut out the cut out the sensor from this one and use it on like a full board from another one well wish me luck here goes nothing what do you guys think that looks like it's just on the outside of them let's keep going see what we can get darn it you see that little capacitor right there or whatever it is Little tiny circuit I just barely cut into. Ah, uh, shoot. Well, might as well cut the rest of it out and then just, I don't know, maybe see if we can't find another board somewhere. That stinks. Darn it. Oh well, let's keep cutting. You guys want the good news or the bad news? I don't, I don't know what the good news is. Good news is I, we, we got it out. Here it is, right here. That's the sensor itself. There it is, that's the sensor. Bad news? I don't even know if you guys can see this or not, but there is multiple layers on the board. There it is right there. You see how there's a bunch of breaks in copper color right there? That means that one layer of the board was the top and the other layer was the bottom and then there was a jumper layer in between that had a whole bunch of different paths running in each direction in every direction. So there is more than just the four connections that we thought. Bad news. But hey, it was a fun thought for a quick minute. Like it would be pretty awesome to have this totally like mounted somewhere in a pair of glasses so that I could be like incognito, but eh, we'll have to figure another way around it. Not even to mention, you see that white connector right here? That is where the screen connects and I broke one of the connections right there too. And I also cut through that connection right there. Eh, it was a fun idea for a minute, but it didn't work out so good. What do you think? This is another camera. Should we try for attempt number two? Eh? It's not HD, but it's already pretty small. Yes, that was much easier. And it's wireless. All I need to do is hook up a battery that's like, I don't know, eight volts. Now I know that there's another person on Tuesdays that does some sort of scientific thing, but hey, tonight is Tiny Chat, so we're gonna do something scientific because we like science and it's pretty quick and this is something you can do at home. Where'd this red backdrop come from? For this thing, you're gonna need two glass containers, the cups, a candle, some vinegar, and some baking soda. I think you guys pretty much know what we're gonna do with the vinegar and baking soda. We're gonna make carbon dioxide. Now, there are no exact amounts for this, but pretty much just take some baking soda, pour it in a cup. I'll just make up some arbitrary amount. Uh, two tablespoons, sounds good. Followed by vinegar, which creates everybody's favorite reaction. And a lot of you guys will recognize this from making volcanoes or something. For making carbon dioxide. After you've made your little bit of carbon dioxide, because carbon dioxide is heavier than air, you should be able to pour out only the, the gas into the other cup. None of the liquid. And now you have a glass full of air that you should be able to amaze your friends with by putting out a candle with a glass of air. Yeah, it's amazing. Science! Now I'm gonna change this up a little bit because I said two tablespoons of baking soda before. I did it already once without you guys watching and I messed up because I had too much baking soda and I made too much, it was, just didn't work. So we're gonna drop it down to one tablespoon of baking soda and then just pour enough vinegar in there to make it fizz about three quarters of the way up and then let it go all the way back down and that's that all of that fizz should be carbon dioxide so you guys will be able to use it 
to pour out and uh, blow out the candle like that. It's pretty awesome looking and you guys can amaze all your friends. It's like a science magic trick. This was like one of the most science filled days ever. I'll see you guys tomorrow and now it's time to pay the price.